Hello, I'm Bonnie Burkert, and this is Truth Be Told Transformation, bringing you tools for transformation to live your highest truth. You just heard a little snippet from Larissa Stowe and the Shakti Tribe. Larissa, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Bonnie. It's wonderful to be here. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So I know Larissa from Bhakti Fest and Shakti Fest, beautiful festivals that happen in the Joshua Tree area, and the shows are just off the charts, always some of my favorites. But Larissa, I know we, we're not doing shows at the moment very much, so I know that you are also online guiding people, and I had a chance to check out a few of your um, meditations, and I was wondering, would you like to tune us in to, um, you know, prior to this conversation? I would love it. All right, I would appreciate love that. It. Okay, it's it's something that I do every day, <laughs> that I must and do every day myself to keep myself aligned. Okay. So, feeling into where you are in this present moment, I'm just going to ask everybody to close your eyes and start to take some nice deep breaths in and letting it all go. And again, take another nice deep breath in. And let that go. Ah. And this time, I invite you as you breathe in, breathe into your heart that which you're grateful for in your life. And breathe out love. And breathe in an aspect of your life that you're grateful for right now in this moment. And breathe out that love into the world. And one more time. Breathe into your heart what you're grateful for. And breathe out love, align with love, dropping into the heart. And opening your eyes and coming back into this room or outside or wherever you are. Ah, and, and just for fun, Thank since you. we're, you know, we're talking about tools today, one of the things that I love to do, if there's anything left in your system, a lot of us have and hold stress right now in our lives because we are facing one of the most epically transitional times in humanity. And with that, with that stress, we tend to hold it. So I invite everybody in this moment to have a little bit of fun and releasing and just take your body and shake out, shake out some shoulds out of your system right now. Ah. And like we were doing when we're breathing out the with ah, make the sound of Ah, just shake it out. Ah, shake out those shoulds. Ooh, ah, yeah. <laughs> and, and laughter too, right? <laughs> what? Laughter as well. Yes, yes. That's so great. Is... Thank you. Oh, it really God. feels good. We don't do it enough. And if you think about it and watch animals, they're doing it all the time. I, right? Yeah. I mean, I have this little bird, this hummingbird that sits outside my window all the time, and he's always stretching and preening. And I mean, maybe I do the preening part <laughs> fairly regularly, but the stretching part, always a good reminder. It feels good. And I saw that you had a call on, I think one of the blogs was maybe one of your Elephant Journal blogs about let's all gather. Let's, let's return to the community cheer at 8 p.m. every night, and it can just be a release. So I know I was doing that in 2020 to cheer the healthcare workers, um, yes. right? Yes. And yes. it was so great. And I sometimes I think it was just me and this one other guy across the canyon. I live in the Hollywood Hills, and I had um, a tongue drum, do no 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 no, and That's I would play awesome. that, and he would be whistling. He was very good at whistling, and we were like playing to each other every night. It was fantastic. And, oh, and so, I love that. So maybe, and I was thinking last night because um, this taping is happening in mid, you know, early January, 2022, and we are still in this pandemic mess. I was thinking how I feel like taken to the tongue drum at eight o'clock every night again. Just yes, yes, please, we need you. Right. We need you. I. 
I really we think need it courageous be- love warriors that are that are releasing not only for ourselves, which we need to do. We always need to bring it to ourselves first, right? But then we're also releasing for everyone else. You know, when we let our let our bodies move and shake and make noise, all that we're holding is not necessarily just ourselves. We're also holding a lot of that tension from humanity within our bodies. So shaking it out is yeah. so good. Yeah, especially so- after watching watching the news you know if you dare if you dare any, anything i mean it's just like you feel that as far as taking in the collective so now that is one of your missions here we talked we i asked what you'd like to talk about and and um you came up with the term we revolution almost almost we evolution we evolution okay so tell me as in as in the we right yeah. like you and me and everyone here that's listening but also the weave illusion. Oh. So as we weave our gifts, as we weave our hearts and our hands together. So it's, we're writing it W, capital W, capital E, volution. <laughs> but it's also yeah. about weaving together and collaborating in play and, and fun, just like we're doing right now, Bonnie. I know. I know. It's really great. I mean, I've, I've had so many people um, just sort of express how this chance for me to bring these messages of people that I know and love and, and have really moved me. And, and I get to share all of you now, um, thanks to Tony Sweet, um, our producer, um, and get to share it far and wide. You know, thank you. Um, thank you, social media, podcast media. Uh, right. So let's do this and let's... Um, continue to just share these stories, Larissa, and tell me how you've been and how things have evolved since you've had to take it from the stage to, right, the stages of festivals, now to a different, again, through the social media channels. What's it like? What are you telling people and how is it different? Well, it's really shifted for me. Um, And it has everything to do with evolution. Okay. And it, it started with the pandemic, like the around March, that March time frame. I was getting a download, a really strong download about the pandemic and that it may not um, be as horrible and not, and when I say horrible, I don't mean in a physical sense, but I mean in a spiritual sense that, that the pandemic is actually like a call Mm -hmm. to um, raise our vibration and to bring up everything that's been below the surface, all of our disowned aspects. Um, It's like all those, those parts of ourself that have just been pushed down, you know, to allow that to, to come up, to be healed, to be seen, to be healed. And I wanted to give this share with our community. However, I was really shy about getting in front of a camera like this. And I felt very confronted with it. (laughs) And I do life coaching. And now that I, now I call embloomment coaching. And with one of my clients, she encouraged me (laughs) to, to get in front of that, that camera and to go live on Facebook. And she said, you know, you're always teaching and inspiring me to push past my comfort zone. And I hear that you're up against your comfort zone. And I was like, okay, you got me. So it was like, (laughs) I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And so I got out, I think it was on March 16th. I think it was, was the day that I finally did a Facebook live and I shared this download in a more complete um, sense than I am right now. And from that, I had such a strong response that day that what popped out of my mouth is that I committed to showing up and leading meditation for the duration of the pandemic. (laughs) (laughs) And here we are two years later. (laughs) <laughs> and so, and, and when it came out of my mouth, I honestly didn't even feel like it was me that said it. 
You ever have those moments where something you commit to something that just flies out of your mouth and then sure. afterwards you're like, oh, <laughs> I wish I could back it up and take it back. Yeah, I think I'm sitting um, here right now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Do you know, like when you're right, when your like, soul, how did I get speaks, here? <laughs> right. Speaks you into being. And that's what happened. And so I committed, I showed up and I started, I led meditations every day. And then I led a 40 day um, Ganesha mantra challenge. Um, and then I really felt like it was time to empower other leaders around me. So rather than it being all about Larissa's teachings and my transmissions and my medicine, I wanted to incorporate the Weevolution into um, that, that beautiful offering of meditation every day. And thus began, like I, I passed the torch, I still lead, most of the time on Thursdays, but even that, sometimes I pass that as well. But I pass the torch to uh, my community on Larissa's Shakti Love Warriors on Facebook and that group. And I invited people to step up and to lead. And it really was really empowering for the community to share their medicine, share their gifts. It's truly changed people's lives and has brought huge healing. Um, it has brought an incredible conversation, I would say, to our community as well, as we navigate some really serious differences in opinions and beliefs in our group. We have been able, as a collective, to model um, compassionate and curious listening um, and allowing for others to have other points of view and other beliefs and respect them and have like a really colorful discussion where we're not polarizing in that discussion. And I'm so proud of our community and how we are navigating this. And I feel like this is what's possible in the world to bring forth a higher vibrational frequency within ourselves and really help assist Mama Gaia into the fifth dimension, into the ascension in the fifth dimension. This is, this is happening. It is destined. And you asked me earlier, I want you to said, shake around more when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is, Yay! this is destiny. So while a lot of people are really freaked out and think this is the worst thing that's happening ever. And, and can and are looking at it from the weeds like i look at it like how you know a mouse is in the weeds and, yeah. and sees all the little details and gets really scared a mouse is you know gets very frightened and is scurrying away from a lot of prey i think that's how we have felt as a collective however if you move into like the eagle eye vision and even higher into a heavenly vision you're going to see something completely different. Mm -hmm. You're going to see this as an opportunity to go within, to do the work that you need to do in your life with yourself. Like look at it, the aspects you're disowning within yourself where you're hard and you're critical to different parts of yourself and do the work of looking at that honestly and bringing that up and then having radical self-acceptance and self-love, self-care. And from that, that going in, that contraction of going in that we've all been experiencing it. And I look at it like, like a bow, like an archer's bow. We're pulling it really far back right now. There's a huge contraction on the planet. But we can take this contraction to turn inwardly, make it in a conscious contraction. And so when we let go of that arrow, pew, we're headed right there into the fifth dimension, into a heart-centered, heart-led awareness of consciousness rather than a mind-led, a heart-centered consciousness to lead our way.
It's so life. powerful. I mean, it's wonderful to talk to you because I know you through song and, and just to hear you take, I think, probably this information and this spirit that you would put into songwriting and finding lyrics to express this. Here you are on camera <laughs> or in the case of other podcasts, you know, certainly in front of the mic not singing, but telling us so eloquently and giving us also beautiful visuals and um, and very dynamic at the same time. Thank you. I'm very passionate about this as I believe a lot of us are right now. I This, this is so profound for me. This topic of conversation has been such a game changer. Um, when I say conversation, it's more the visions that I've had and I could give you a little bit of a, a background in those visions. Yes, which, absolutely. Which, yeah. which open this up, yeah. okay? Please. So I, um, and I want to make this as succinct as possible because I can get really, like I can take <laughs> it far and long. Um, but I became very ill in 2019 mm. and I was diagnosed with ductal carcinoma in C2, which is a form of breast cancer. Ouch. But but that wasn't even the, the hardest thing that happened to me. I mean, it was probably in the beginning, it was the scariest thing to face that. But once I started on my path of facing it, I was I was told by a surgeon that I should have a mastectomy and which I did not feel was the right choice at the time. I felt like I wanted to see all that I could do to heal inside out first before choosing that option and so i plunged deep into into to healing and as i was doing that um i actually had a an experience of an ovarian torsion but at the t at the time i didn't know what that was and i found out that later that it was a massive infection but i ended up in the hospital for that and when I was in the hospital for the, to try to discover what was, why I was declining so quickly, unrelated to the breast cancer, <laughs> mind you, um, yeah. I, when I was in that hospital, I picked up C. diff. And if you don't know what that is, that is an intense bacterial infection on top of the other infection that oh, I had. No. So, but I didn't know it when I was in the hospital, it's easy to pick up on these, pick up these infections. So a month later, they found out that it was indeed a, an ovarian torsion. Um, and I was thrown into emergency surgery. And when I had emergency surgery, it looked like, okay, they fixed that. They sent me home. But then I had internal bleeding from, I had a rupture from the surgery and I was sent back to the hospital. I had a uh, transfusion. And when I was in there, it appeared that I was having sepsis, that I was, that my organs were shutting down and it looked like I wasn't going to make it. That's so scary. It was, it was outrageously scary. This was in 2019 before the pandemic right and the amazing part about all of this is is when i was in the hospital and they didn't know i had c diff but i just had my blood transfusion and they thought i was like they didn't know how to help me i was going downhill really quickly i had a vision of divine mother mm. so Sometimes those contractions, I'm telling you, they're absolutely necessary. In my own experience, it was so necessary that I went through this huge physical crisis. Wow. I saw Divine Mother. She came to me. She shared with me that I had work to do on myself and that I hadn't been receiving at the depth that I needed to receive in this lifetime. Hmm that I was not in a healthy feedback loop, that I was playing out what she called the saintly martyr, hmm. which was wanting to be there for others, showing up thinking I had to save the world through my music and everything I could do. And what I wasn't allowing for is I wasn't allowing for 
others to share their medicine with me and also the perception that I have that I needed to save others was completely off completely off that the work that I needed to do was on myself what a huge and message I, for all of, there's a big message in that for all of us yes <laughs> it's, this is this is why I am so incredibly turned on and am passionate about this message because it saved my life. I, when I, when she was first teaching me, I had a hard time grasping what it meant to fully receive and what it meant to not be in the savior mode. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was a huge question to me. But when she said, you need to do the work on yourself, you need to fully embody your divinity. Larissa does, yeah. which means really getting consistent with your spiritual practice, daily spiritual practice, and taking a really great assessment of the things that are hidden within you. Like, why do you want to save so much? You know, why do you need to be the savior? Like, these are things we need to look at, Larissa. <laughs> and as I began to do that, that work with myself, I began to heal. That night, specifically in the hospital, when she came into me and started to give me this divine awareness, I literally went to from having to go to the bathroom every 20 minutes, not being able to hold any food down to being energized, full of life to, to be able to eat. And I was sent home the next day on good Friday. Amen. Easter miracle. An Easter miracle. However, <laughs> like, yeah. however, the story gets a little bit more interesting because I went home I felt I can't say I felt amazing I was still in bed but I wasn't in this I wasn't being ravaged by the C. diff again I still didn't know I had C. diff okay so I had had massive pain non-stop pain having to go to the bathroom every 20 minutes I won't get into that detail but it was just gnarly and that had stopped and I was home I was in bed my whole family was there for Easter and my little one who is eight years old, who at the time um, was, what was she? She was six at the time. She didn't mean to, but she like, like uh, put her elbow into my, the area that was having a lot of issues and it opened back up again. Oh. And I, um, started having, I mean, I don't want to say that I didn't start internally bleeding again, but it, it inflamed it intensely. Um, and that night I was in so much pain on Easter night and I had beloveds around me. Um, Benj who lives here, you know, on our property, who is my collaborator, my musical collaborator. He was here, um, with me, my best friend, Laurie, um, was here with me from Northern California who had been here throughout this ordeal. And and one of my best besties, Mirabai Davy, was here. So I had a lot of love. And I asked them to focus awareness on healing because I, I was becoming overwhelmed with fear. And we went into the light, but something really interesting happened. And that was unexpected. I started feeling this massive amount of sadness and a feeling of being abandoned, which I was surrounded by love. So why did I feel that way? And as I started to lean into it, I realized that it wasn't me that was feeling this way, that I was actually Gaia. I was actually Mama Gaia. Wow. And she completely took me over, like completely took me over, where I no longer felt like Larissa. It was like I was witnessing, but I, I, I didn't feel 
like me because it was all this intense energy was moving through and she was so sad and honestly was pissed like <laughs> pissed oh. and I never oh. have ever had thought of Mama Gaia feeling such you know rage honestly I I've always thought of her as being this higher evolved being and, and that we're kind of the problem mm -hmm. and and she's you know this beautiful symbiotic system but wow it was shocking <laughs> it was shocking i was like just to witness her energy coming through and her feeling so abandoned by the divine masculine huh. And what she explained to me to be the divine masculine is within all of us is awakened consciousness, realized consciousness, that which we know in the highest within us. Like if I were to ask you, you know, what do you believe ultimate truth is? How you may respond because you're connected to the divine uh, masculine within yourself, the protector, that the realized truth that we all have actually within us. And she was, she was calling forth the divine masculine within humanity, her children, to protect her and to protect ourselves. Because what she shared that specific day on Easter is that it is us that we are the ones that are not going to make it, her children, that she recognizes that she actually will make it, but it's us that won't make it. And she loves us so much and cares so deeply and so wants for us and so wants for herself, for consciousness itself to move into a higher vibrational frequency. And she needs us to do that because we're one organism. Like we are not separate from her. And that's what she communicated. She said, this is a we, right? And and she asked me, because I because I was like, like just blown away by this as she's coming through. And she pointed the finger at me just like Divine Mother did and said, Larissa, you need to do your work. And it makes me want to cry oh, yeah. because to, to really get at that deep of a level, like where I'm not showing up and where I haven't shown up and I have compassion for myself because I feel like I didn't know better. And I, and I recognize that humanity hasn't really known better. It's a, we've been in a developmental stage, mm, true. almost like toddlers, like toddler adolescent consciousness, where we look to authority, we look outside ourselves you know, for the answers for truth. And we haven't known better, but now it's time. And she asked me to link arms and hearts with beloveds who have like an activated divine feminine within them, the nurture, to link hearts and arms with them and to walk forward in a unified vision like a we vision, putting our own personal agendas aside and like, how do we come together now as a collective to raise our vibration, to raise the vibration of this planet in the collective on this planet of humanity. So that was profound. profound. And she asked me to do my work so that you know, I could let go of needing to always lead in the way that I'm used to leading, that it would be a new kind of leadership. It would be a leader who empowers leaders yeah. is what she was asking. She's like, I'm, I need you to step into a different role, um, which means kind of stepping back in a lot of ways too, allowing others to step forward, to share the stage more. Okay. And again i did i wasn't sure how to completely do it 
and out of when I ended up back in the hospital because I had to go back to the hospital again because I started going around again. So back in the hospital, they finally found out that I had C diff. So that started turning around, which was awesome. Um, but that was the moment because I knew that I had to evolve. So I asked Divine Mother, I said, how do I evolve? And she said, you don't evolve anymore. You weevolve. And that's when this, this is when it became such a mission to find ways to create more of a weevolution. If there is no evolving without evolving, there is no evolution without weevolution, right? And so that's when I started looking like, how can, how can I help? How can I become a servant of this mission that Mama Gaia is asking of me and Divine Mother is asking of me? How, how can I serve in this way? So fast forward then, you know, to that moment when I realized when I was sharing all these meditations on my own, I'm like, this is another way to, to empower leaders around me to share others medicine and that we can learn from each other. And we need to empower everyone to become leaders, not just those who are used to using their voice, you know, not just singers and songwriters and, and public speakers and, Right. You know, all the people. And I was, I'm going to jump in real quick and just say, I think yeah. leadership can look, um, it can take different forms, right? It can look different. It doesn't necessarily yes. have to be, you know, like you say, on stage or this strong projection. Right? Yes. Absolutely. And to create more spaces for people to really share and in their sharing actually get to receive themselves even more receive yeah. have a, a deeper clarity of their own medicine okay. so one of the biggest distinctions about the weevolution that i would say divine mother and also my frequencies my frequencies have revealed themselves to me and, and i know i can share about it here as my multi-dimensionality it's my multi-dimensional selves yeah. that when I go into deep states of oneness and, and my, with my Kundalini awakening, I've had great access to oneness states. And in those states of consciousness, I've experienced these freak different selves that are much bigger in their capacity to be able to hold love than Larissa has learned to do at this point. So they, they come to me, they teach me, Divine Mother teaches me, <laughs> Mama Gaia was an incredible teacher. And the frequencies have been really working with me on this piece of, um, of embodiment, of embodying divinity into form, to making that real in this form and helping others make that real in their forms and again us linking and embodying our divinity which is actually the divine feminine when we fully fully embody we are activating that divine feminine frequency quality within us the shakti yeah it's the shakti it's shakti ma so we're all going, we're all going, honey. We're all going to the next, that dimension, that fifth dimension together. It's, it's absolutely time and it's destined. And I'm not, I, I'm surprised. I thought I was like just getting this vision in the beginning. Like, am I the only one who's getting it? But I've seen others. I'm not the only one who has been downloaded these visions and there are so many people right now experiencing their multidimensionality too. It's just blowing my mind. It's like, it's like, this is really happening. You know, we're, we're not sounding as crazy woo woo out there anymore. Cause there's so many of us that are like, this is real. This, 
embodiment of our multidimensionality is absolutely real. It's like, I may not have seen the ETs as some people have like in daylight, but I'll tell you, I've become, I've experienced my own ET, <laughs> own ETs within my own, my own, uh, integration they've been integrating more and more does that make sense yeah it does and i because it and thank you because it's sort of helping me connect some dots right there as well because it is as far as um some people having sightings um right that is that's a different dimension and as we're opening up that's thus maybe why there are more and more sightings happening not to mention people being confident to speak of them Yes. Yes. Yeah. I believe I'm fully am seeing and feeling that in the world right now. It's like we're seeing them, you know, people are seeing them. They're seeing them in broad daylight. They're seeing them in dreams like ETs are coming in dreams. I have seen ETs in dreams. Um, but more so I've experienced my own extraterrestrialness, the right. integration of I know I have like one of my frequencies and they call themselves by the way, the frequencies they, and I like when it. I say they, I really mean we, again, it's another we, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I'm a part of them. Like we're all different frequencies. It's like, we're all different radio stations of frequency, vibrational frequency. And my vibrational frequency that exists in the i would say i call it like the planet sirius but it's, it's like the star sirius is the star for this planet it's like i have a very strong connection before i even knew that that was a thing i was being shown and given visions of my multi-dimensionality of that aspect of myself there's i could i could tell you about a lot of different ones no it's so and they're profound. definitely it's so <laughs> profound. And I mean, it's, Larissa, I, again, I know you kind of through the yoga, bhakti, devotional music world, right? And this feels so exciting because it just, it, it seems to be an evolution of where we were 10 years ago. I've probably seen you at play shows as long, maybe not 10, but probably seven to eight years ago. It's a long time. That's a chunk of, it that's is a, a long time. Like it a is. lot has happened. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Yeah. But a lot has happened. And you are really demonstrating the work that was being done on those stages in Joshua Tree. And again, I know you've played all around the country in different types of shows, not just, not just those particular festivals that I happen to know and love. And you are demonstrating here today, and I hope for all the people that have had a chance to see you perform just the work that you've done and how it's informed you and to continue to share in a, in a new way. And I know your writing, for example, as well as, you know, we, we do have a Facebook Live and Instagram Live and places like that, certainly YouTube, certainly a show like this. So let's bring it back around yeah. to the music, though, because we will be back at concerts again. How does your revelations, things that you've known, but now you're really, really starting to embody them. And I thank goodness you're okay, by the way. Thank yes. goodness that you feel better. Deeply grateful, yes. How does it inform your work as, as a singer, songwriter, an artist in that way? What do you think, where do you think it takes you? Well, it's, it's a deeper embodiment. Um, I feel like I'm just becoming more and more real if that it, it's a funny thing to say but it reminds me of the velveteen rabbit you know when the the velveteen rabbit was a stuffed animal and was loved up by the little boy and the little boy got scarlet fever and then the bunny's eyes started to come off and its nose the thread started to come out and the bunny was going to have to be thrown away because it was infected with scarlet fever but instead it ends up becoming a real bunny because of all the love that it experiences through the little boy and, and through itself of loving the little boy. And I feel like that. I feel like I'm just becoming more and more real. 
No, I'm going to cry. <laughs> That's, I forgot that story. <laughs> that is so great. And I mean, again, we call the show Truth Be Told, right? And then we're transformed. This is like of such a transformational story that you've shared. And it's really about coming into your truth, that real, being real. What do people might say, well, what is your truth? It, it, is, it is just really having the courage to be authentic and listen, right? Listen yes. to these messages that come through. They come through in all kinds of different ways. I'm sorry you had to be, uh, you know, down for the count in the hospital to the extent that you were for this. I mean, right? Who and knows? I'm not anymore. I right. mean, I, I feel like it was necessary, just like I feel that the pandemic is absolutely necessary yeah. for us to make that leap that all of this polarization that's come to the forefront needed to come out. It was there anyway. And so to face that, if we begin to see how we judge, how easily we judge ourselves, how easily we judge one another, and it, it really starts with ourself. There's so much judgment that we hold against ourselves. And when there's so much inner judgment, it starts to come out there and okay. we start pointing the fingers out in the world at other people who we don't agree with and i propose that there are different parallel realities going on at the exact same time okay. and and that this one isn't right and this one isn't wrong i think that there's that people are choosing different realities to learn different things right now i really do very interesting. And if we can respect one another, that people are making different choices, not based upon like the, the, the judgments that we've put on it. Right. Um, not like, you know, thinking other people are sheeple or thinking other people are selfish. It's like, those are projections and True. they're not, and, and they're not coming from the kindest place. So how can we actually shift that? And rather than objectifying and dehumanizing others, how can we love one another, honor one another so much, get really curious about each other's different ways of looking at things that we develop our empathy muscle. And through that empathy muscle, it cultivates more love and through the cultivation of more love and more uh, empathy, the collective makes this jump this vibrational jump from the head to the heart. Please, please, <laughs> we need this. Larissa, there's so much to talk about. Um, this is so fascinating. I mean, we, I, I could take you down a million different questions, um, the paths uh, to finding this, to specifics, um, but I think our time is about to wrap and I do wanna take a moment to have you share maybe a little bit about where people can find you and, and the work that you're doing right now. So certainly website is listed in the description of the show, but maybe you'd like to tell a little, tell us a little bit about how people can find you. Well, I'm really excited. We are going to be um, doing a 41 day mantra challenge with the Adi Shakti mantra with an Adi Shakti mantra, I should say that gently begins to um, awaken the kundalini which is a whole other story that i believe is a really powerful piece in our evolutionary evolutionary awakening um and we're going to be doing this as a community on larissa's shakti love warrior group page which means we're going to be going live every day at 11 a.m pacific standard time and from the 1111 to the 1122, we will be doing an Adi Shakti mantra together for 41 days with this purpose of raising the vibration, activating, gently activating the Kundalini, which sparks deep inside out learning, awakening, um, navigation in this world. So I invite you to join us and to sign up on our Shakti Love Warrior group page. You just can go to Larissa Shakti Love Warriors and sign, sign on up. 
I will definitely join for that. <laughs> Yay! Fantastic. Wahe guru. Namaste. That is so great. Larissa, thank you. Thank you for kicking off our first show of 2022. Again, I just feel very transformative. It was a beautiful story of love and light. And I, I'm just going to let everybody know that um, your music streams very beautifully on Spotify and wherever else you listen to digital music. So um, definitely check out Larissa Stowe and Shakti Tribe. We described, we just talked about Shakti. Thank you so much for joining us. I look forward to seeing you soon. You stay very healthy and well. Okay. Thank you yeah. so much, Bonnie. We'll definitely I plan find each other to <laughs> stay very healthy as I have a consistent spiritual practice that Please keeps me healthy. Do. And next time I want to hear that gong in back of you. That is, that's a beauty for sure. Thank you so Absolutely. much, Larissa. Thank All you, the best. Bonnie. <laughs> All the best to you. Much love. Much love. Wow. I don't know. Transformation, show by show. Thanks for watching and listening, everybody. This is Bonnie Burkert, and I will remind you that I have a new episode every Wednesday, and Tony Sweet is on every Friday as well as Robert Hensley on Mondays, all at 3 p.m. on our YouTube channel and wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks so much for listening. We are here to bring the light and the love and just play it forward. Share and follow and like as much as you possibly can because we love you. Signing off until the next time. Namaste. <laughs>